Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Introduction to Psychology Part 1, PSY 312 by Dear Knowledge. Today in this video we're going to start Chapter 2, which is Methods of Psychology. Before going towards the Methods of Psychology, we'll have a brief discussion of scientific methods and in which we are going to study steps of scientific methods. So moving towards the scientific method, it is a step of gathering data so that the bias and errors in measurements are reduced. A set of assumptions, you can say uh, it is a set of assumptions, attitudes and procedures that guide researchers in creating questions to investigate in generating evidence and in drawing conclusions. So basically, Scientific methods to be science. In reality, the term science does not refer to a special group of highly advanced field. Rather, it refers to th two things. Number one is a set of values and number two, several methods that can be used to study a wide range of topics. Some of the core values, we will focus on the core values that all fields must adopt to be considered scientific in nature. And four of these are most important, that is accuracy. Accuracy is a commitment to gathering and evaluating information about the world as careful, precise, and error-free manner as possible. Objectivity is a commitment to obtaining and evaluating such information and as uh, in a manner that is free from bias as humanly possible. Skepticism is a commitment to accepting findings as accurate only to the extent that they have been verified again. Open-mindedness is a commitment to changing one's view, even views that are strongly held if existing evidence suggests that these views are inaccurate. In striving to discover and understand consistent patterns of behavior, psychologists are open-minded. They are willing to consider a new and alternative explanation of the behavior and mental processes. However, their open-minded attitude is tempered by a healthy sense of scientific skepticism that is, psychologists critically evaluate the evidence for new findings, especially those that seem contrary to established knowledge. And in promoting new ideas and findings, psychologists are cautious in the claims they make. Collectively, the assumptions and attitudes that psychologists assume reflects crit critical thinking. Like any science, psychology is based on empirical evidence. Evidence that is, a, that is a result of objective observation, measurement, and experimentation. In psychology, psycho researchers want to see what is really there, what really is there not what their biases might want them to see. So the way to do is by using scientific method, a system of reducing bias and errors in measurement of data. As we have discussed in the previous videos, that the four basic goals of psychology are to describe, to explain, to predict, and to control or influence behavior in men and mental processes. In trying to achieve these four goals, psychologists rely on the scientific method. The scientific method refers to a set of assumptions, attitude, and procedures that guide researchers in creating questions to investigate, in generating evidence, and in drawing conclusions. So this type of scientific methods include perceiving the question, performing hypotheses, testing a hypothesis, driving, drawing conclusions, Report your result. These are the five steps of scientific method. The first step is perceiving the question. The first step in investigating, uh, in any investigation, is to have question to investigate, right? So the first step in scientific method is perceiving the question. You notice something interesting happening in your surrounding for which you would like to have an explanation. An example might include uh, that you have noticed that your children seem a little more aggressive with each other after watching particularly violent cartoons, uh, cartoon programs uh, on Saturday morning. So you wonder if the violence in the cartoon could be creating aggressive behavior in your children. So this step is derived from the goal of description. What is happening here? Once you have a question with you, you want an answer. The next logical step from a tentative answer or explanation for the behavior you have seen, this tentative explanation is known as hypothesis, which would lead to the second step, forming a hypothesis. First, 
let's discuss some definitions the definition of hypothesis is hypothesis is a tentative explanation of a phenomena based on observations or you can say that it is a tentative statement about the relationship between two or more variables the definition of variable is a fact that it is a factor that can vary or change in ways that can be observed measured and verified Operational definition is a precise description of how the variables in a study will be manipulated or measured. Once a researcher has identified a question or an issue to investigate, he or she must formulate a hypothesis that can be tested. Based on your initial observation about what's going on in your surroundings, you form an educated guess about the explanation for your behavior, putting it into the form of a statement that can be tested in some way. So going back to the previous example, you might say that children who watch violent cartoons will be more aggressive. The next step is testing the hypothesis. Well, people have a tendency to notice only things that agree with their views of the world, a kind of selective perception is called confirmation bias. For example, if all if a person is convinced that all men with long hair smoke cigarettes, the person will tend to notice only those long-haired men who are smoking and ignore all the other uh, hair, long-haired men who don't smoke. So the scientific method is designed to overcome this tendency to look at only the information that confirms people's biases by forcing them to actively seek out information that might contradict their biases or hypothesis so when you test your hypothesis you're trying to determine if the factor you suspect has an effect and that the results weren't due to luck or chance so that's why psychologists keep doing research over and over to get more evidence that support hypothesis testing hypothesis the method we use to test our hypothesis will depend on exactly what kind of answer we think we might get. So we make more detailed observation or do survey in which we ask uh, questions of large number of people or we can uh, we might design an experiment in which we would deliberately change one thing to see if it causes change in the behavior of other. This step involves deciding research methods to use for collecting data. There are basically two categories of research methods, descriptive and experimental. Each research method answers different kinds of questions and provides different kinds of evidence. Descriptive methods are research strategies for observing and describing behavior, including identifying the factors that seem to be associated with a particular phenomena. Descriptive methods answer the who, what, where, and when kinds of answers about behavior. Who engages in a particular behavior? What factors or even seems to be associated with the behavior? Where does the behavior occur? When does the behavior occur? How often? In contrast, you can, okay, uh, com, uh, descriptive methods include naturalistic observations, surveys, case studies, and correlation studies. In contrast, the experimental method is used to show that one variable causes change in a second variable. In experiment, the research deliberately varies one factor is then measures the changes produced in a second factor. Ideally, all the experiment conditions are kept as constant as possible, except for the factor that the research systematically varies. Then if changes occur in the second factor, those changes can be attributed to the variations in the first factor. So what do you do with the result of your testing? Of course, testing the hypothesis is all about the goal of getting explanation for behavior which leads to the next step. In the previous example, you can say the best method would probably be an experiment in which you would deliberately change one thing to see if it causes change in the behavior of other you are observing. So the next step would be drawing a conclusion. In this step, you analyze the data and draw a conclusion. 
So once observation has have been made and measurements have been collected, the raw data needs to be summarized and analyzed. So research, researchers use the methods of a branch of mathematics known as statistic. Statistic is a branch of mathematics used by the researchers to summarize data and draw conclusions based on hypotheses. So once you know the result of your hypothesis uh, testing, you will find that either your hypothesis was supported, which means that your little experiment worked, or your measurement supported your initial observation, or it wasn't supported, which means that you need to go back to the square one and think of another possible explanation of your observed behavior. Like, could it be Saturday morning that makes children a little more aggressive or Saturday breakfast? So the result of any method of hypothesis testing won't be just the raw numbers of measurements. Any data that comes from your testing procedures will be analyzed with some kind of statistical methods that helps to organize and refine data. The last step will be reporting your result. At this point, you would want to write up exactly what you did, why you did, how you did, and what you have found, so that others can learn from what you have already accomplished or failed to accomplish. And the reason for another reason for reporting your result is that even your research gave the answer you uh, ex expected. Your investigation might might have been done incorrectly or the result might have been a fluke or due to chance alone so it can help others for advance to be made in any scientific discipline researchers must publish or share their findings with other scientists in addition to reporting their uh, results psychologists provide a detailed description of the study itself including who participated in the study how the participants were selected how variables were operationally defined what procedures and methods were used and how the data were analyzed what the result seems to suggest the reason to do is because so uh, if others can replicate your research study over and um, like replication is uh, in a research repeating a study or experiment to see if the same result will be obtained in an effort to demonstrate reliability of result. So describing the precise details of the study makes it possible for others to investigate, to replicate or repeat the study. So replication is an important part of the scientific process. So when a study is replicated and the same basic results are obtained, scientific confidence that results are accurate and is increased. So this allows others to predict behavior based on your findings to modify your control behavior, which is the last two steps of the goals of psychology, to predict and to control the behavior. So this was the end of the video. If you like the video, you get the point, your concept was cleared, you can like the uh, video, uh, you can share it with your friends so they can also get helped. If you want to stay notified of the upcoming videos, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.